Hello, good day. Welcome back to the I Smile series. It has been a while since uh, we did any videos. Uh, the last time I recorded them from home, three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Today we record them from Dubai, uh, from our offices. Uh, I will be recording a few short videos today. Uh, the first one, uh, which is this one, I will be talking about project success. There has been a lot of discussion on project success, and if you go online to read about project success, you find many ways of people looking at and defining project success. Some, if they are a service provider, uh, have one perspective. If you look for project owners, they might have a different perspective. So how do we look at project success, and from whose perspective? Uh, will you consider owners or service providers? Do you consider uh, project manager or project management as a function or, or organizational perspective? Uh, the SOCAD view, and this is part of our, uh, <clears throat> related to our camp methodology, is that we should have four dimensions of project success. Now, they don't necessarily apply all the time, all of them, but at least three of them should be applied on every project. And these dimensions of success are linked to our project life cycle model, um, which uh, in uh, relation to this video, we will be posting some pictures. So basically, what are these four dimensions of success? The first one is pure technical. Um, did the project deliver the product or whatever it is, whether it's software or a building, uh, and according with the technical specifications? Uh, so basically, this is a pure technical dimension of success, mostly focusing on scope and quality indirectly. Well, actually, not indirectly, directly, because basically it looks for did we deliver the technical, the product per specification? design specification, uh, features, whatever the case might be. So that's it. If the project team was able to deliver the project and according to this specification, then we can consider we have technical success. <clears throat> the next dimension is the traditional dimension, which is the project management success. Did we deliver the project? Basically the question is, did we deliver the project and according to the project management parameter. Notice I'm not saying below budget or ahead of schedule. Yeah, because we are talking, when we talk about parameters, performance parameters, we typically have a plus or minus, 5% or 10%, depend on the organizational preference. So if we achieve these goals, then we deliver the project within the project management plan parameters, then great, success. Um, so Usually, these first two dimensions are measured, uh, can be measured by the project team before they close the project. Obviously, uh, the first one, the technical one, can be measured uh, when we do the final acceptance for the project product, where the project management success, as we close the project, we can do the project uh, management success. The other two dimensions are hard to measure by the time we close the project. And these are, the first one is called project delivery success, which is we measure it in comparison to the project authorization or project charter, which is basically about did we deliver the project per the objective that were outlined or per the, uh, the charter or the authorization document that was issued by management or the sponsor. Um, in some project, this, me this measure might be linked to the, uh, the force measure, but in some project could be independent. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Let's shift to the last one, which is the objective success. When management came up with an idea or people or the strategic plan or wherever the idea came from for the project, to develop a strategic plan, uh, to develop, sorry, the idea for the project, uh, they have obviously uh, that idea was driven by something. Um, maybe we have another video to, to talk about idea generation. But uh, basically leading to, um, should have been leading to a feasibility study. 
And so when the idea is launched and the feasibility is done, it's usually done because the organization uh, expecting some benefit from the project. And if they authorize the project, then they are authorizing the project to realize the benefit that they are expecting. Um, obviously, because organizations are not charities, they're not just going to do project for the fun of it. They are doing project because they are expecting benefits. Now, when can we measure the realization of benefits? Obviously, not at the end of the project. It might be a while after. Depend on the nature of the project. It could be weeks, months, or even years. Uh, which, by default, make it that this is not something the project manager would be responsible for. Uh, and this is not something about the project manager job, although some people saying, ah, the project manager should be responsible for this. It's more of an organizational dimension that should be measured down the road whenever it's feasible to measure it. We'll stop here, and then we will talk about other topics. Thank you.